Howdy everyone, welcome back to Live Life Simple. I've been using Avid Armor products for several years now and I've been pretty partial to the Avid Armor USV32, but because of the overwhelming amount of people who wanted me to review the guide series Avid Armor, today without any further ado, we're going to go over the GS53. If you're interested in a vacuum chamber sealer or really any of Avid Armor's products, make sure you stick around to the end of the video today because I'm gonna show you how you can get 10% off. I mentioned the USV32, which has been my workhorse for the last probably three years and it has had thousands of bags of Mylar through it and I absolutely love this thing. I think it is the best value for the buck for a vacuum chamber sealer anywhere out there. But if you are more in the uh, serious category, commercial, or you're just uh, doing freeze drying or uh, food uh, storage type things constantly, you may want to look into the GS models. So I normally like to do a complete unboxing of this because I like to be completely transparent, but this thing is so heavy, it's about 100 pounds that I really needed help getting it out of the box. It was just a really awkward lift out of the box to get it on here. So it's already out of the box. I have not taken any of the wrapping or anything off. This is completely the way it came from the factory. So before I compare the USV32 and the GS53, because there is a, a large price difference, I want to show you just the general specs of the GS53 and kind of go over the GS53, and then we'll kind of put them head to head, if you will. The first obvious thing that is different between this is the construction and the build quality. Obviously, since this is 100 pounds, materials used, much higher quality. The lid is a very thick acrylic type uh, material. I'm not sure if that's what it is. I'm guessing it is acrylic. Inside, you're gonna find just some basic uh, quick start guide and your manual, as well as your power cord, some other tools, the oil to fill the vacuum pump because this does actually have a, an actual refillable vacuum pump in it. It's gonna come with your accessory hose. This is good if you want to upgrade it to be able to do uh, ball jars, mason jars, and uh, just other containers and things like that. This would be your heat strip, which is gonna seal your bags, whether you're doing Mylar or just regular uh, plastic bags. Another replaceable uh, heat strip for it when this wears out, because it will eventually. And then this is just a filler plate. This will just kinda take up some extra of the airspace inside of this chamber. So your heating block will go on these two posts right here and sit right there. Inside of the vacuum chamber, you have a very sizable space. As far as a mason jar without any attachments, you will still have to put one on the side. I'm not sure why, I, as far as I know, there's no manufacturers that make them so they will stand up. But if we have the accessory, uh, you can do it easily outside of the chamber anyway. I'll show you that later in the video as well. So when you're ready to vacuum seal something, the, uh, the mechanism of this closing is, is really, really nice. It's also spring-loaded, the door spring-loaded, but I love the door mechanism on these GS series. Some quick bullet point items. This comes with a rotary oil vacuum pump that is uh, changeable as opposed to a sealed vacuum pump. It also allows you to have a pump conditioning program, which makes it last for a very long time. All heavy-duty stainless steel construction. The dome on this one is also completely transparent, which is nice because you can see what's going on inside of it. This also has a 12 inch seal bar, which means you can seal up to a 12 by 16 inch pouch in this machine. This is a totally different control panel than I'm used to. Fully changeable as far as vacuum time and seal time, which means uh, it will accommodate the maximum amount of people who are gonna be using this, whether you're a chef or a hunter or a homesteader or a freeze dryer. This also has an accessory port, comes with an accessory hose that will accommodate all kinds of different other things that you can purchase, like a mason, a mason jar sealer or you can uh, you can use any of the kind of sealing type jars or things that you can purchase for vacuum sealers. The reason I was originally drawn to Avid Armor vacuum chamber sealers is that they can do multiple types of bags. So you can actually do your clear food storage bag, you can do a food type mylar bag, you can do a uh, seven mil mylar bag. Uh, so depending on whatever your situation is, whether you're a hunter or a freeze dryer, 
or uh, just a, a food preparation type uh, business or whatever, it will do all those types of bags. The first thing we need to do before we fire this up or do anything else is you have to add oil to this vacuum pump. And that'll actually give us a good chance to take a look at this vacuum pump because this pump is one of the reasons you're gonna see a price difference between this and some of the competition and some of the other models in the Avid Armor series. So we just need to pull this back panel off and that will allow us to see this one third horsepower oiled vacuum pump. So just for comparison, this is my freeze dryer pump which runs the whole vacuum system in a giant freeze dryer. Really not that big of a size difference. This pump is 800 bucks, something like that. So right there that shows you the price difference in, uh, in this type of pump versus a lower end model which is gonna have a sealed oil pump. These types of pumps will last a very, very long time if maintained properly. So what we need to do to start that maintenance is actually fill this before we get the, uh, the vacuum chamber sealer going. So we stick a funnel in there, provided oil, we want that little moon shape thing down there to show the oil level indicator at half. Put the oil fill cap back on, and then you're supposed to check this weekly or every couple times that you use it, and you can actually do that just by this little view window uh, after you get the cover put back on. If you're using this pump on a consistent basis, like in a commercial setting or something where you're using it continuously, uh, it will send you a message to change the oil actually on this readout. Uh, it's recommended to do that every six months, and it's also recommended to do a weekly pump conditioning program, which we're gonna do next. The pump conditioning program is what you need to run before you ever run anything through this machine. It's, a, it's basically a break-in period for the pump. The weekly maintenance on it is recommended because if you're running a lot of food through this, the oil in that vacuum pump is meant to absorb moisture and the pump conditioning program that you do weekly actually helps get rid of that moisture out of the oil, thus extending your vacuum pump life. Now we're ready to condition the pump. You're gonna press the power button. We're gonna press this pump conditioning. You'll see PCP come up on the screen. We're gonna close the lid, and this process takes about 10 minutes. And as this goes through the cycle, it will actually count down. You can see it says CO8. There's eight minutes left. Before we seal a couple bags, I wanna show you a quick overview of the functions on this control panel. This is your power button. Uh, this is your programming button, and you can actually preset five different programs to uh, five different types of bags or foods or whatever, especially if you're doing uh, multiples of the same kind of food all the time. Uh, this plus and minus is just to adjust your parameters of your vac time and your sealing time. And to adjust those, you just need to hit this check mark button. And that's gonna show you uh, right now it's set at 20. So if you hit the plus, you can do 25 or 26 or whatever you wanna sell it, set it to. Hit this check mark button again. That 1.5 is your seal time. And back here on the left, these two buttons right here are dual function. So they'll either do a plus or a minus of something or this uh, will advance to the next thing. So if you wanna skip out of vacuum or uh, end your seal time early, you can hit this advance button. Up here on the right, you have this button that looks like a can. It's not just a clever picture. That is for doing uh, ball jars or mason jars. This button here, we already went over, that is your pump conditioning program. This button we have kinda gone over. This is uh, more or less the start button. And then these buttons in the center are actually an indicator. You can see that one lit up, that is your vacuum time. That would be your seal time. This one here is going to indicate that it's deflating and then if you're using the canning feature, that will light up. Okay, for our test seal of bags, I'm gonna use two different kinds of bags. I'm gonna use a food storage bag and a mylar bag. And I'm also going to use some billiard balls for a dramatic effect. Uh, we'll start with the food storage bag. This, this you wanna keep your seal time lower. You don't wanna burn through the plastic. Your vac time is not gonna matter. Um, so we're gonna adjust it to, we'll start with probably like a one and a half seal time. All right, eight balls in there. Here we go. It's really nice to be able to see very clearly what is going on inside this entire chamber. Countdown clock for the vacuum is at 34, so that counts down. It lets you know when it's gonna move on to sealing. So now it's sealing, it's uh, releasing the vacuum in the chamber. You can see all of the air going out of the bag. It's gonna flip the bag, or it's gonna flip the lid open, and then you can see you have a vacuum sealed eight ball. Next, let's do some Mylar bags. So Mylar is a thicker, 
plastic uh, type of bag. And mylar can be tricky because you need to take the seal time up. Uh, the vacuum's not gonna matter as much unless you don't wanna crush whatever is inside here. Uh, but the seal time, you're gonna need to take up. I usually leave mine in between like three and a half to five, but you don't wanna get it too hot because it will burn through the seal. And if you're trying to store something very long term, you don't want that seal to be broken because then air and oxygen can get inside this bag. Uh, and that's not, just, that's not just for Mylar, that's really for any kind of bag. So we'll do this again with the Mylar. The seal I set is at four right now. We'll see where that gets us. I believe this is a five mil Mylar bag. If you've ever wanted to know what a vacuum sealed nine ball looks like, there you have it. The last thing I wanna show you is the accessory ports. Um, this hose comes with it. This will work with just about any kind of container that is meant for vacuum sealing. Um, you can see there's no, there's no vacuum on this container right now. So we're gonna put it closed. We're gonna hook up the accessory hose. You can see the lid kind of set down. You can watch this vacuum gauge and it will move. And you can adjust the vacuum time on that as well, but really what you get is a vacuum sealed jar or container. And this will also work with a uh, mason jar hood, same thing. You can buy the attachment to do that as well. Same port, same uh, accessory hose that comes with it. So now let's compare it to some of the other Avid Armor models. I've had the USB 32 for a very long time. I have always promoted this model because it's just a workhorse for the price. About 600 bucks right now in comparison to this guide series, which is about 1300. There's about an $800 difference between the two. Uh, that $800, I would guess primarily is because of the vacuum pump. That is the, uh, the heart and soul really of the vacuum chamber sealer. It's gonna last a lot longer on this GS series. Other differences besides the vacuum pump, I would say just the overall construction, lots better. This is definitely a commercial unit. It's all metal, all very thick stainless steel. The control panel just has a nicer feel to it. Lid is much thicker, the seal is much thicker. The actual capacity inside of this is probably not really a whole lot different uh, between the two. You can actually get on Avid Armor's website and see the inside of the chamber uh, specifications. They do both have the accessory port. Uh, on the USV32, you actually have to remove that. Your accessory port is this black thing right here. So they are both um, accessory compatible. So head to head, this one in my hand is the USV32 seal bar. Really about the same size. Portability, if you need that sort of thing, is uh, definitely a difference between these two. The USB 32 is lightweight. You can, you can move it around if you need to. This is pretty much meant to stay in its spot, but in its defense, that's what it's meant for. It's a, it's a commercial type unit. It needs, to, it needs to sit on a table like it is right now and just stay put and do its thing over and over and over and over again. Uh, the lid systems, much nicer on the guide series. The lid is way, way nicer, and I like that it pops up automatically spring-loaded after it's completed. That not only makes it easier to put your next bag in, but this is also meant so this heat seal uh, bar does not heat up so you can do bag after bag after bag, whereas with the USV32, that is not the case. When you're doing multiple bags in the USV32, uh, sometimes it does get over overly hot and it will burn the seal. You need to let it cool down at least for like a minute or something before you do your next bag and then you can do a few more before it gets hot again. Those are really the quick and obvious things that I see but I would say it's the difference between just a residential or uh, maybe light use model versus a commercial model. And anytime you're doing either or, you're gonna see a price difference because they're built specifically for that purpose, commercial, residential. I'm not picking favorites today. Uh, I love this USB 32, but this may make more sense for me. It may make more sense for you. And I told you I would show you how to get 10% off of all of Avid Armor's products. All you need to do is follow the link in the description of this video, and then at checkout in the promo code, all caps put live life simple. That is the name of this channel. Um, and no spaces in the promo code. And while you're there, uh, make sure you subscribe to Live Life Simple. We do things like this. We do reviews. We do food storage. We do freeze drying. We do a little homesteading and gardening as well. 
Uh, while you're there, click the bell to get notifications. If you like this video and you found the video helpful, let us know, let YouTube know, give us a big old thumbs up. And I hope you found this video informational and at least uh, mildly entertaining. In the meantime, remember to live life simple. We'll catch you next week.